All right. Psalm 1. Let's dive in. We're going to read it first, then we're going to find some images, and we're going to go through it. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Psalm 1. All right, here we go. I'm not going to preach this right away. Well, what you're used to is like, all right, well, let's preach our way through it. No, we're going to do the tool together a little bit. We've got to go through this. If we're, going to, if we're going to really study this together, we have to go, go through and say, what are our images? That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to collect our images. Um, again, I might pick something that you don't think is an image, or you might pick something that I didn't write down. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to work with some images. So the first image I picked up on is a walk in the council. There's an image to walk in the council. So the image is this, is that you're walking in the presence of someone and you're walking in their council. The first image. Second image I wrote down is stand in the way. So there's your image, standing in the way um, of sinners is, is the full phrase, but standing in the way. So you're going to walk in the council, you're going to stand in the way. Third image, sit in the seat. So it's walk in the council, it's stand in the way. And it's sit in the seat of mockers. Now, here's one you may not think is an image, but I, I, I tend to think that it was. Um, delight. And the reason I thought that delighting was a, an image, because you could just say that someone likes something, but to delight in something, that's just a richer word. And if I said I delighted in someone, I just, it, that just stood out to me. This might be one you didn't, wouldn't write down, but I did. So I wrote down delight. That's one of my images. Another one of my images, meditates. Uh, meditating, I thought, was an image. Um, because it's, it's, it's different than just thinking and reading. Like, what, what does it mean to meditate? And, and that, that, to me, it was an image. Again, you might not have had that as an image. That's fine. Here's a more traditional image. Tree planted by streams of water. Because it's, it's how does it put it? He is like, here, there's your... Your simile, he is like tree planted by streams of water. So we need that image. Um, yields fruit in season. Yielding fruit is an image. So I wrote that one down. Leaf does not wither. It's an, it's an image. So... It yields its fruit in season, and its leaf doesn't wither. So liver, uh, withering leaf, that's, that's an image. Um, another one I wrote down. Chaff. Chaff of the wind so easily blows away. Now, I don't know if you've dealt with chaff recently, but we'll talk about what chaff is. But chaff is an image that would make a lot of sense to their culture because it's an agricultural uh, community. Um, so Chaff. Um, and though not an image, I just wrote this down um, because I noticed something repeat itself. And here's something I, I didn't say this about poetry, but if you say things repeat themselves, um, pay attention. The, the poet's trying to drive a point home. So in verse 5 it says, not stand. Remember, in the beginning it says they stand, and now in verse 5, not stand. So I just made note of that. Um, very often, I didn't say this about poetry, but um, not, not all things like this, but many poems can be chiastic in nature, which means here, it starts off with a point here, it makes a second point, it makes a third point. And then what it means by chiastic is it makes a similar point. It make, it, it's kind of like a V. 
And so this not standing is something like a, a, a chiastic uh, structure, which is to say some, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to walk or you don't want to uh, stand and then standing again. So there's like there's some comparison here. Just pay attention to that. All right. So now we're going to work our way through what these images could make us think or feel. So the way we're going to do this, this is awkward to do as a sermon, but we're, we're, my, my goal is not to preach a sermon. It's just not my goal. My goal is for you to understand how to study the Bible. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, not a long time, but just a little bit. If our image is walk in the council, what does that image make you think or feel? Just take 30 seconds. What does it make you think or feel? All right, so, sure. Because what I learned from this, because I was having a hard time getting the image, mm -hmm. and to me, image was, I was looking for, like, more of a noun. Okay. It seems like images are more from a verb, like the way, like, walk in council, stand, sit, like, I, I was looking for, like, command, you know what I mean? So okay, yeah, so you said you were looking for nouns instead of verbs, and a lot of these are verbs. Yeah. Um, so why I think of images is pictures. Sure. So sometimes it can be a noun. Right. Sometimes it can be a verb. Right. This particular psalm has lots of images that are verb-based. Yeah. Okay. So that won't necessarily be true for um, other ones. Well, I'm glad that's why I'm asking, because then I'm yeah. thinking, like, well, maybe I should yeah. verb. What you should be looking for is pictures. So if it's giving a picture of some kind. Now, that's why I said, you know, you might not pick as delight as an image, because it's, it's, you don't think about it as an image. But when I w read the word delight... My mind went to an image. So since my mind went to an image, that's why I wrote it down, because the poet is trying to make you think in images. So if it, if it causes a, an image or a picture in your mind, that's when you would probably would write it down. Sometimes there'll be verbs. Sometimes there'll be nouns. You're really looking for pictures in whatever picture the poet chose. That's a, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Uh, are there any others? OK. So I'm going to throw out what does the image make you feel or think. I'm going to throw several out. Um, you may have something that I have not said. Um, I'd love to know what you, you, you got because it's probably better or, or it'll give a deeper thought to what, what I've got. But when I thought about walking in the council, it makes me think about listening. I'm walking in someone's council. I'm, I'm listening. Uh, I'm taking it in. Um, it might also mean that I'm walking to counsel. I'm going the same way. They gave me advice. They gave me counsel, and I'm going to walk in it. I'm, I'm going to carry it out. I'm going to execute it. I'm going to apply it. So when I'm walking to counsel. I'm applying their counsel. Um, if I'm walking to the counsel, it means to be among them. I'm walking with them. Okay? Did you have anything else that you thought or felt with that image? What's that? Safety. What, why, did you, why did you say safety? Um, you know, it's in the, somewhere in the words of the Baku Council. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so walking council could bring safety unless it's walking the council of the wicked, which is going to bring something different. Yeah, but yeah, okay, I get that. And did you have something? Well, I would like it's a choice. It's a choice. Okay, yeah, it's a choice, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Trust you had something? Yeah. Confidence, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of move in a certain direction, accomplish the purpose. Cool. Fellowship. Fellowship. All right. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's let's move on. Um, stand in the way, and you could also tie to it. Stand in the way of sinners, but stand in the way. Um, I'm gonna give you a short amount of time just so we can can keep going. But 15 seconds. Stand in the way. What does it make you think of? 
What's that? Block. Block. Like a blockade. Like a blockade. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's just do it this way. Yeah, throw them out. What does it make you think? Pausing. Pausing. I like that. Anything else that makes you think? It's an action, sure. Yeah? All right, here's some that I threw out. To remain. I'm going to stand with it. I'm going to remain. I'm going to endure in it. There's this staying. Like, I, I like Melissa's word was pause. Right? Uh, uh, endure. Um, when I thought about standing, it was like, kind of like an attitude. Like, um, I'm kind of like I'm more entrenched in it a little bit. Um, to stop moving. I'm standing. Stop moving. So it notices I'm walking in the council. There's action and movement with it. Standing is I'm going to stop. That's, that was something that stood out to me. Um, to delay. What you got, Dorcas? Mm. Yeah, you're getting the influence. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, it might be to persist in or to continue in. Now, I thought about this, like, what does this image connote a little bit? And I started thinking about what does it make you connote? Uh, what, does it, what does it make you, um, what are the overtones to it? And it made me think this, which I hadn't thought of otherwise, is if you want to break free from this thinking you got to walk out of it. You don't have to walk out of something. So that was just something that made me think. All right, third image. Sit in the seat of mockers. What does that make you think or feel? Sit in the seat of mockers. Is somebody kind of like sitting far off and okay. kind of like commentating? Okay, sitting so far off and kind of commentating. Cool, I like that. What else? Mm. I don't know if you heard that. Resting so you can stay a while. Yeah, there's this, this kind of like staying with it a little bit. I was just going on that idea that he was walking to stand and now he's sitting. Love this, Dorcas. He's in the midst of this and he's being influenced. Yeah. So did you hear what she said? I know online you didn't. But um, she's saying, like, I'm noticing where you walk, you stand, and you sit. And uh, there, there's something about this. And, and you're, you're picking up on that. And I'm really glad you, you're picking up on that. Because sometimes images work together. And they're using images for you to reflect on how those images fit together. Not, not always, but sometimes. And here you've got a walk, a stand, and a sit. And we'll pull that together um, in a few minutes. But I, I love that, Dorcas. Thank you. Anything else? Sitting in the seat of mockers, is there anything else that makes you think or feel? Thank you. Hiding. Yeah. Mm. What, what, why did that make you think hiding? I don't know, because when I think of like a crowd of mockers, right, mm. you can like, blend in. Okay. Sort of the... Oh, because you can blend in with the mockers. Right. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Here's some things that I wrote down. Entrenched. Not moving. Oh, from a sense of the mockers, I started thinking about mockers and what does that really look like. Prideful boasting. Um, to deride someone, to point the finger at someone, to laugh and make fun of. Just sit in the seat of mockers is like, um, I'm going to make fun of you for doing that. I'm going to make fun of you for not going this way. I'm going to deride you for what you think is right. I'm going to uh, tear you down. That's, that's what a mocker would do. And you're going to sit in the seat of mockers. And, and I kind of like that idea, like hiding, blending in. It's, it's easier um, to blend in, right? Like sometimes, at least I'll be self disclosure um, if other people are um, being sarcastic, well, I'm going to be sarcastic. Well, I want to I wanna fit in. Uh, maybe that wouldn't be my first, you know, movement if I'm using my tongue. But, you know, if other people are doing I can, I can get right on in on it. You know, like, okay. Uh, next uh, word picture, delight. Um, I'm going to tell you what I had just to keep us going. To enjoy, great pleasure, to be enraptured by. A high degree of pleasure. A synonym of delight is to feast. Um, when I was like, what does it make it connote? I was like, okay, well, to smile. When someone's delighting someone, there's a smile on their face. To savor. Um, to look forward to. 
uh, to hold on to. Um, we'll uncover more about that later and what that might mean in the, in the scripture here. Um, all right, meditates. I'm, I'm going to keep us going again. So um, meditates. To ponder. To think about. To go back to. Like I thought about it once, I'm going to go back and think about it again. And again. And again. Um, to ruminate. Here, here's a different image. To chew the cud. And um, some people are like, what is chewing the cud? Those of you who are younger. Um, those of you who are, are at least my age and, and, and older go, like, chewing the cud, yeah, I've used that phrase before. You may have used it. Do you know what it means? To chew the cud. This is a disgusting image. But uh, what happens is to chew the cud means this is a cow will chew grass. And because of multiple stomachs and the way they digest it is they chew the grass and they swallow it and they put it in a, a chamber there. And then they, after a bit of time of digesting it, they regurgitate it. So they can chew it again. The regurgitation is the cud. To chew the cud is to chew on it again. Why? Because the cow's going to get more out of it by continuing to chew on it, to continue to break it down, and then it will send it again. It does this four times to chew the cud. Often an image when we talk about meditating. Uh, to look for a deeper meaning. Um, and it can be like deep thought. Interesting thing. Um, in our world today, meditation, because of New Age, is coming with a different idea of what meditation means. Meditation from a New Age perspective is to empty the mind. You want to empty your mind and get to a place of, of meditating, where it's like emptiness. That is not Christian meditation. That's not biblical meditation. Biblical meditation means to fill the mind. I'm filling my mind with the things of, of the Lord and His Word. Uh, another Im image, a tree planted by streams of water. Some translations, I think, actually say living water, but, but mine, mine says trees planted by streams of water. Um, a tree planted by streams of water is planted. It's not moving. It has deep roots. It's sustained. It's nourished. You think about that? It, it's planted by streams. It's nourished, right? It has what it needs. It doesn't move because it has, doesn't have to go somewhere else to get something. It's planted here. Um, it's long-term. It says uh, streams. It means multiple sources. Abundance, it might really be mean. It might not really be this idea. Maybe this is a hyperbole. Maybe it really just means abundance. Um, for their culture, this is something else it might mean a little bit. Um, it's an arid culture. They, they have seasons with great rain and seasons with great um, dry periods. And so a lot of water for them is held in cisterns. And people carry water. They go to wells and they carry water. So for them to have this image of planted by streams of water is like I'm, I'm planted by something that's alive. And I'm planted by something that for, for a Jewish community, like it's, this is where it comes from God. Whereas water comes from, from people is like I had to carry it somewhere. Um, and there can be that difference. Also for them with water, they think of, of two things. They can think of streams. They'll think of um, rainy seasons, but they'll also think of the Dead Sea, salt water. Living water, it does not have salt in it. Um, all right, next image, yields fruit in season. There's an image, it yields fruit in season. So if you're thinking about yielding fruit, here's what you're going to think about. Uh, it does what it's supposed to when it's supposed to. It doesn't bear fruit all the time, in season. And so in, at different times you'll have fruit, and other times you won't have fruit. Now here's the deal. Does a fruit, does a tree that doesn't have fruit, is it dead? No, it just doesn't have fruit. It produces fruit in season. So a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season means at the right time, when it's supposed to, it will bear fruit. All right? It says leaf does not wither. Here's another image. The leaf does not wither. It's um, not lacking. It's vibrant. Um, so I started thinking about withering. And I started thinking about a uh, withering leaf. Why does, a, why does a leaf wither? Because of a few things. A root failure. So if there's something wrong with the roots, the leaf is going to wither. Second reason. Soil could be deficient and not have all it needs in it. It'll wither. Third reason, the soil could be toxic. 
and the leaf will wither. The other thing about a withering leaf is the outsides begin to show that the tree's in trouble. So you don't look for fruit to see if a tree's in trouble. You look to the leaf to see if a tree's in trouble. Or you look to the leaf to see if it's good, not just fruit. You look for leaves. Um, uh, chaff, the wind so easily blows away. I don't know if you know what chaff is, but in the agricultural culture, um, chaff is the, the casing that's kind of on, on the stuff they would harvest. And when they were uh, harvesting it, when they were threshing, they would take um, wheat and they'd take a pitchfork and throw it up in the air. And they're trying to separate the chaff from, from the good wheat. The chaff you don't want, the good wheat you do. And the way they do it, throw it up in the air. And what happens is they weigh different amounts. And so chaff would stay up in the, in the air while the wheat would fall down. And then it would, the wind would blow it away. That's the whole image. And so what it's saying is like you throw it up in the air and it separates. This comes down, that goes away. And the wind easily does it. And they would set up um, structures to draw the wind in to actually literally do that. So when you, you think about that, um, chaff is small and it's insignificant. It's not wanted. Um, it's part of something that gets discarded. Um, it has a... Uh, it's just easily blown away. But it was a part of something for a long time. It is also... Um, dry and brittle. It can be considered the waste or the dead part. Um, so those are all the things there. And then there's the last thing I said last time was uh, not standing. Um, might be an image. Okay, so here we are. We want to go through the psalm. We've meditated on it by looking at the images. Exploring what do the images say? What are they making me think or feel? That's that's how you meditate on it. Now we want to go back through the psalm and take that into it, so the song come the psalm comes to life for us. Does that make sense? Are there any questions before we move on? All right. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law he meditates day and night. Let's just take that. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Blessed is the man who doesn't listen, who doesn't take in the counsel of the wicked. We can be people who um, hear the counsel of the wicked, but to walk in it is completely different. You cannot escape the counsel of the wicked. It's all around us. People are constantly telling us, this is the way to live life. This is how you get this. This is how you get that. It's all around us, but we don't want to walk in that counsel, which means we don't want to apply that counsel. Because it's going to lead to something that doesn't look like it's going to lead to, but it will lead to death. Don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. It says, blessed is the man who doesn't. So what happens is most of culture that's going down this road of wickedness saying, hey, this is how you get rich. Here's how you treat people. Here's how you get a promotion. You, you, it doesn't matter who you walk all over to get it. You just get it because that's what it means to be blessed because to be blessed is to have money. To be blessed is to have all the things that you want. To be blessed is to have power. And, and so there's the counsel of the wicked says, here's how you get it. No, no, no. Blessed is the man who does not walk in that counsel. And why does the poet say it? Because it doesn't look blessed originally. It, it may look like you're, you're not getting it, but blessed is the man. So don't walk in that counsel. Now, now Dorcas picked up on this. Don't walk in the council. It's got movement to it. They're walking. So I, I want to think about that image. And the reason I want to think about that image is because of the next image. Because if you're walking, and you got to think about like a hike a little bit. And I know I'm going I'm to bring a different image in, my own image, because I've meditated on it. This is my image. And I think Dorcas is kind of where you were going. Have you ever been on a hike with someone or a walk? You don't have to be on a hike. It doesn't have to be a trail. It could be paved. You're on a walk. You're on a hike. You're talking with someone. And when you're talking with someone, you're walking in the same direction, you're listening, you're taking it in, and you're talking to one another, and you're, you're picking up on what each other's saying. Now, have you ever gotten to a point where the conversation wanted to go a little bit deeper? So you're on a walk, and you're going along, and all of a sudden, like, I, I really want to hear what you had to say there. I think I missed that a little bit. And I want to, so we'll stand. You ever been on a walk where you just stood? All of a sudden, this hike is just stopped, and here you are, and, like, and you're taking it in. 
And, and what happens when you start to take it in is you're remaining in this council or you're remaining in this conversation. You're enduring in it. And, and you're, uh, you've stopped moving and you're, you're delaying your progress because you're like, oh, I want to I kind of let this sink in. Well, often on a hike or a walk, when you've done that, you've done the walk and, and then you, you stood. If you really want to go further into it, have you ever done this? Like, hey, there's a bench over there. We'll still sit down for a bit. You ever done that? Or if you're on a hike, there's a rock over there. Let's sit down. Um, often hikes or walks have this progression to them when you're talking with someone. Do you see that progression here? See, what happens is if you begin to walk in the counsel of the wicked, you will soon stand with the wicked, and you'll begin to take more of it in. And then eventually your standing will move to sitting. And then when you move to sitting, as the picture here puts it, is you're sitting in the seat of mockers. If you're sitting in the seat of mockers, what happens is mockers are doing this. They're like, you want to walk in the ways of God? That'll never work. You want to you uh, put other people first and you want to serve them instead of serving yourself? <laughs> you're never going to get that promotion. Uh, yeah, that's not the way you do it. Oh, look at that moron over there. I mean, this is how you do it. But see, the ways of God are very different from the ways of the world. In fact, the Bible says it this way, my thoughts are not like God's thoughts. In fact, God's ways are not like my ways. So if I'm walking in the counsel of God, it's going to look different than what the rest of the world is doing because I'm walking in His counsel. Here's what I want to do. I want to walk with God. I want to stand with God, and I want to sit with Him. But I don't want to do that with the wicked. Because blessed is the man who doesn't walk, stand, or sit in the seat of mockers or, or with sinners or with the wicked, but blessed is the man or the woman who sits with the Lord. Now it takes those images. It doesn't use the exact same image because it would be boring to do that. So it says it this way. His delights in the law of the Lord and on this law he meditates day and night. See, meditating is to walk, to stand, and to sit. That's what it is. See, the thing is with God's word, here's what happens. You start walking with God's word. And, and when you're walking with something, just think about it this way. I'm walking. I'm moving around. I, I'm not paying that much attention. It's coming in. It's affecting me. It's impacting me. I'm walking with it. And when we read scripture, many of us are walking with it. But we want to be people who will not just walk with it. We want to be people who will stand with it. Go, hey, what, what did that say? And then eventually we're like, oh, I want to, I want to sit with this for a bit. But how many times or do our quiet times look like a walk instead of a, sand, of a stand? And how many times does our, our time in the Bible look like a walk instead of a sit? Now, here's the thing. Walking, standing, and sitting, they're all being, experiencing the counsel, right? So I, I want you to know this. It's okay to walk with God and, and walk with the Word and just read it. You'll get something out of it. It's okay to stand with it. It's okay to sit with it. And I think all three are good. So I don't want you to be like, oh, you got to sit with it. No, I mean, you can walk with it, which means, to, what I mean by that, just read it. I mean, I just read Psalm 1 and moved on. Okay, that's walking with it. Standing with it, is, I read it a couple times, I kind of sank into a few things. But to meditate on it is to sit with it. Now, if I'm going to meditate on it, we started talking about meditating. We said, um, what, did we, what did we say? Ponder, to think, to go back to. That was some of the things we wrote down on our image, to, to go back to. It's like, I'm, I'm going to read this again and again and again. I'm going to keep going back to it. And, because if I, if I go back to it, I'll see a different um, nuance to it, a different facet to it. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to chew the cud. If I'm going to chew the cud, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to digest it. I'm going to swallow it. And then I'm going to bring it back up and think about it again. But many times what people will do is like, oh, I read it and I moved on. I literally have, there was a season in my life where I asked God, where do you want me to read today? And for an entire month, he told me the exact same chapter. For an entire month, I read the exact same chapter of Scripture. And I'll tell you, I saw new things in it almost every time. We want to go back. We want to meditate on it. We want to chew the cud, so to speak. We want to, we want to get more out of it. It says that his delight is in the law of the Lord. Right? It's like, I, I delight in this. Like, I enjoy spending time with the Lord and, and um, understanding his character and his ways and understanding the, the things he thinks about life and about himself and about me. I just, I look forward to that time. If we're looking forward to it, and maybe you're not delighting in it. 
So ask God to help you delight in it. Uh, this is in Psalm 27. This is not in this psalm. But it says this, um, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Here's an image, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And I was meditating on this, to gaze, and I was like, what does it look like to gaze? Um, good news was I was on a plane when I was thinking about this. And next to me, um, and, and like just across the aisle, was this woman. And she's doing this. And she looked at this thing for like the whole flight. And I don't know if you know what was on her finger at that point. Like, what's she doing? This is a big diamond on her finger. And she is, it didn't matter what's going on around her. It didn't matter that there was in flight entertainment. It, it didn't matter that they were serving drinks. Oh, she was just, and then she, she changed it because the light, you know, I mean, when light hits a diamond, it, it looks different, right? And see, so like, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord is the light. It's in the law of the Lord. Like, to look at it, to look at it from different angles, to gaze upon it, meditate. And his delight is in the law of the Lord. To take great pleasure, that's delight. To take great pleasure, to be enraptured by, to have a, a high degree of pleasure, or to, a cinema, we said, to feast. So I want to feast on the Lord. I want to be enraptured by, by the scriptures. I want to be enraptured by what God has to say. This is, this is what the psalmist is encouraging us to do. Um, let me put it this way. How many of us are delighted by a football team? I used to be delighted by one around here. <laughs> but um, who's, who's delighted by um, a movie or a TV show or a musical or a song? Like we delight in things. And if you're having trouble thinking about delighting in the Lord, what do you delight in? Now you're, you're, you're capturing the picture here. You delight in a child. You delight in the face of your spouse. You, you, what do you delight in? I delight in this. Um, gosh, you know, like walking the council, standing in, in the way, or, or sitting in the seat of mockers, like sometimes we delight in the wrong things. There was a TV show I delighted in. I will not name it. I thought it was great. The writing was captivating. The characters were... Um, it, very interesting and the ways they interact with people uh, just drew me in and then one day God said to me stop watching that show I'm like why I mean there's no sex in it there's no this or that and then he goes are you kidding me they, these people are nothing like what you want to be they're conniving they're bitter um, they're trying to get ahead at any cost do you want to be like that I'm like well, no it's just a TV show mm -hmm. it's like yeah stop watching it because if you walk, stand, or sit, that's what you'll become like. Meditate on me. So, um, to delight in, to meditate upon. Um, There's a tree planted by streams of water. To have deep roots. Right? I, I want to have deep roots. So it says here, he meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. There's your hyperbole. But at the same time, like it means all the time. Um, he's like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. So he's like a tree planted by streams of water, which means I'm not moving. I'm nourished. I don't need to go anywhere else. I don't have to go and find nourishment in other places. It's right here. I'm planted. It, it, here, here's the question. Are we planted with the ways of the world or are we planted with the Lord? If we were to ask what we were planted by, where are we? Planted. It, it matters where you plant a tree, doesn't it? If you plant a tree by living water, do you got to water it? No. You plant it, you know, nowhere near water, do you have to water it? Well, yeah. You have to tend it. And what happens is I think a lot of us live in a dry and airy land, spiritually speaking, and we from time to time treat this like a watering can. Hey, water me a little bit. Oh, water me a little bit more. Oh, my leaf's withering a little bit. Need a little bit more. We treat it like a watering can. He's saying, we want to be a tree planted by streams of water, not moving, where our roots go deep, and we're always connected to the source, and there's abundance of it. You know, it says here... Um, which yields its fruit in season. It's spiritually in my life, I'm going to yield fruit, but it's not all the time. 
I'm going to yield fruit in season. And there's other seasons where I don't yield fruit. It's okay not to yield fruit. What's, what's got to pay attention to is the leaf. Are you withering? Many of us look to fruit to identify whether we're okay. Don't look for fruit to identify if you're okay. Fruit will produce fruit in season as long as the plant or tree is well. What's the leaf look like? Are you withering? Um, are you planted into something that's good soil? Are you in toxic soil? Or is the soil you're in, is it deficient in the things that you need? Plant it. And then it goes on, it says, not so the wicked, they're like chaff. Which means this, the chaff used to be connected, but there's going to come a day when there'll be a separation between the wicked and the good. The good being those that have chosen to follow the Lord because there is no one good, no, not one, but Jesus died on the cross for us that anyone who believes becomes the righteousness of God. And he'll separate those who have faith and those that don't. And the ones that don't, and when he separates them, is when there's a harvest. When he separates them, um, that which used to be together will be separated. And it says, this is what will happen to the wicked. It's gone. But not so the righteous. Not so those who walk in the ways of the Lord. Lord, They'll be the wheat that falls to the ground. And it says here, uh, therefore the wicked will not stand. See, it looks like they're standing. But at the end, they won't be. They won't be. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. They won't even be among the righteous. They're among us now, but they won't be later. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. You know what? That verse 6 really jumps out to me. Bless the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. The Lord watches over the righteous. If I stand and sit and walk with him, he watches over me. I don't need to make things happen. Let him watch over me. I'll make sure I didn't miss anything. Do you see the richness of the psalm? Do you see why meditating on it in this way, looking at the images, and then just going back through and applying what we just unpacked and carrying it through the psalm, how it makes it come to life? See, I hope the effect in our, our life through Psalm 1 is to say, I want to be planted by a stream of water, and this is it. I want to meditate on the ways of the Lord, and I want to walk out of the counsel of the wicked. I want to walk in the counsel of the Lord. I don't want to sit with the, the sinner and the mocker. I want to sit with the Lord. Now, I might sit in the company of many people with the mockers, and I might sit among the few with the Lord, but that's where I want to sit. They may mock me, but I know that's the truth. They can mock, but one day, they won't be here. I hope that day doesn't come quick because I want them to know the Lord. The reality is, I want them to walk with me in the counsel of the Lord. I want them to sit in the presence of the Lord with me. And the Lord is patient, and he'll come back. And when he does, he'll do this separating. But I hope that more people will begin to walk in the counsel of the Lord before he does. So I hope that Psalm 1 um, encourages you to spend time with the Lord. I hope it encourages you to not treat this like a watering can, but to be planted. And this week, meditate. Psalm 23. That's what we're going to do next week. So I know that you probably filled out your sheet. On the last chair back there is another set of sheets that didn't get handed out. And you'll get a blank one that way. You also have the other two because it's all stapled together. But, um, but you grab it. You got your blank one. Photocopy it. Do something with it so you can use it again and again. There's your tool. And do Psalm 23, and then next week I'm not going to do a, a grammar lesson, but we're going to walk through Psalm 23, okay? And then let me tell you what's going to happen this month in June. We're going to do Psalm 23. Um, there are two weeks in June where I will not be here. Um, our family's going to go on vacation. We're, gonna, we're not going to be here the last two Sundays of June. Chris Dominic and Chris Hanger are going to lead our congregation through a psalm or a proverb. They're going to go through a 
some poetry, and you all are going to do it together. So if you are online, hear me on this. There will be no live stream those two Sundays because it's a difficult thing to manage the live stream and everything going on in, in place. And not only am I gone, but some other people are gone. It's difficult to manage all those things. It's only going to be in person. So come those two Sundays in person. There is no even a recording of it. You cannot catch it later. It's only in person. And the other thing is, because it's going to be a lot more interactive than what I'm doing. You are literally going to do it together. They're not going to preach a message. They are going to facilitate us going through a psalm together. And it's going to be great. It's going to be rich, and you're going to be a group meditation, and together you're going to get this psalm, and you're going to unpack it, and it's going to, going to flow. So that's what's going to happen those last two Sundays. Um, I'm going to take us through Psalm 23 next week. Uh, with the last two Sundays, they'll, they'll take you through a psalm. All right? Um, any other announcements I need to in um, those regards? Okay. All right. Let me, let me pray for us, and we'll close this out. Jesus, we thank you for your word, and we just ask you to make us be people who delight in you, people who delight in your word, delight in his truth, and delight in you. Would we be uh, like trees planted by streams of water? Help us to be nourished in you. Help our roots to go deep and help our roots to be strong. We don't want to walk in the counsel of the wicked, so if we have been, would you help us to walk out? And would you help us to be people who know your ways because we walk in your ways, who know your heart because we sit with you and experience the depths of your heart and who are enraptured with you and delight in you. In Jesus' name, amen.